In the book of Numbers chapter 16, there's a story that might just send a chill down your spine. This isn't just any tale, but a tale of rebellion, a challenge to authority and a divine judgment that redefined the course of a nation. Our key players, Korah, a Levite, the son of Ezer, and his co-conspirators Dathan and Abiram, sons of Eliab, and On, son of Palath, all prominent members of the tribe of Reuben. These men, along with 250 others, were not just mere followers, but respected leaders of the Israelite community. Their discontentment, it was with Moses and Aaron's leadership. They felt a growing resentment, a gnawing dissatisfaction. They were not content with the status quo. They questioned why Moses and Aaron held a monopoly on communication with God. Why should they alone be the chosen ones? It was in this heated atmosphere that the seed of rebellion was sown. The discontentment soon grew into a full-blown confrontation. It was a dramatic turn of events, a clash of wills and worldviews. On one side, we had Korah, a member of the Kohathite clan, along with Dothan, Abiram, and 250 Israelite leaders. They were filled with resentment and a burning desire for power and recognition. Their adversary, Moses and Aaron, the chosen leaders of the Israelite nation, appointed by God himself. The confrontation was inevitable, the tension palpable, and the stakes extraordinarily high. Korah and his group made their move, challenging Moses and Aaron's authority. They accused Moses and Aaron of elevating themselves above the rest of the Israelites. In their eyes, Moses and Aaron had taken too much upon themselves, asserting, You have gone too far. The whole community is holy, every one of them, and the Lord is with them. Why then do you set yourselves above the Lord's assembly? But Moses and Aaron, they didn't retaliate with anger or defensiveness. They didn't lash out in spite or pride. Instead, they responded with humility and wisdom. They fell face down, a sign of their submission to God's will and their respect for his authority. Moses, in his wisdom, understood that this was not a personal attack against him and Aaron, but against God himself. Moses then addressed Korah and his followers, saying, in the morning, the Lord will show who belongs to him and who is holy, and he will have that person come near him. The man he chooses, he will cause to come near him. It was a bold statement, a declaration of faith, and a challenge. Moses also addressed Dathan and Abiram, but they refused to come, escalating the confrontation even further. They accused Moses of leading them away from the land flowing with milk and honey, only to kill them in the wilderness. The confrontation was intense, the accusations heavy, the tension almost unbearable, but through it all, Moses and Aaron stood firm, trusting in the Lord, ready to face whatever came next. The stage was set for a divine showdown. Moses, not one to back down, issued a challenge. In the face of such blatant defiance, Moses, the humble shepherd turned leader, took a stand. He proposed a test of holiness, a divine showdown of sorts. He challenged Korah and his band of rebels to bring their censers or fire pans filled with burning incense before the Lord. This was a bold move as incense was considered sacred and only the priests were permitted to offer it to God. Moses was essentially inviting Korah and his followers to step into the holy role of a priest. This was a role they claimed they were entitled to, but it was a role that carried with it a grave responsibility, a covenant with the Almighty himself. This was not a challenge to be taken lightly. This incense, a fragrant offering, was more than just a pleasant aroma. It was a symbol of prayer, of intercession, a bridge between the earthly and the divine. It represented the pleas of the people rising to the heavens seeking favor and mercy. To offer incense was to stand in the gap, to bear the weight of the people's sins and present them before God. In essence, Moses was saying, you think you're holy enough to stand before God? Prove it. This was a test of their sanctity, their purity. It was a challenge that would reveal the true nature of their hearts. Would they be found worthy in the sight of God, or would their rebellion lead to their downfall? The stakes were high. This was not a game of chance or a test of wit. This was a matter of divine judgment, a test of the highest order. The outcome would determine not just their fate, but the fate of all who followed them. The gauntlet was thrown, and the next day would determine who was truly chosen by God. The dawn of the new day brought with it a divine judgment that was both terrifying and awe-inspiring. As the sun rose, the earth began to tremble beneath the feet of the Israelites, a chilling reminder of the power they were defying. This wasn't an ordinary earthquake, but a divine intervention, an act of God himself. 
The earth opened its mouth wide, swallowing Korah, Dathan, and Abiram along with their families and all their possessions. It was as if the very ground they stood on rejected their rebellion, refusing to bear their weight any longer. This was not a natural phenomenon, but a supernatural display of divine authority. The earth closed over them and they vanished from the assembly, descending alive into the realm of the dead. But the divine judgment didn't end there. Fire blazed out from the Lord, consuming the 250 men who were offering incense. This wasn't an accident or a trick of the light. This was the fire of God's wrath, a consuming flame that left no room for doubt, no space for questioning. It was a clear and unequivocal statement, God is not mocked. These events were more than just a display of divine power. They held a message, a lesson for all who witnessed them. The opening of the earth and the consuming fire were God's way of asserting his authority, of demonstrating the consequences of questioning his chosen leadership. They served as a stark reminder that rebellion against God's appointed leaders was, in essence, rebellion against God himself. Furthermore, they underscored the gravity of the priesthood, a role not to be taken lightly or coveted for personal gain. The priesthood was a divine appointment, a sacred duty entrusted only to those chosen by God. It was not a position to be seized by force or won through cunning, but a role to be accepted with humility and reverence. These events conveyed a warning as well. They warned the people of Israel and indeed all future generations about the dangers of discontentment and rebellion. They cautioned against the allure of power and the folly of pride. They reminded everyone that God's judgment is real, inescapable, and final. In the blink of an eye, the rebellion was quelled and the rebels met a grim end. The divine judgment served its purpose. It silenced the murmurs of dissent, extinguished the sparks of rebellion, and reaffirmed God's sovereign authority. The story of Korah's rebellion isn't just a tale of ancient times. It's a timeless lesson on the perils of challenging divine authority. The aftermath of this divine intervention was a poignant reminder of God's power and holiness. In the wake of Korah's rebellion, the Israelites faced a severe plague. This wasn't a random occurrence, but a direct consequence of their disobedience. It was as if the earth opening up and swallowing the rebels wasn't enough. This plague served as a sobering reminder of God's wrath against those who defy his authority. Yet, in the midst of this calamity, a symbol of hope emerged. Aaron's staff. Among all the staffs of the tribal leaders, only Aaron's budded, blossomed, and produced ripe almonds. This was no ordinary event. It was a divine sign, affirming Aaron's God-given authority and silencing any further murmurs of discontent among the Israelites. Now, what can we glean from this story? First and foremost, it teaches us about obedience. God's commands are not mere suggestions, but directives that require our compliance. Disobedience, as demonstrated by Korah and his cohorts, leads to dire consequences. Secondly, this story underscores the importance of respect for authority. Korah's rebellion was rooted in his disregard for God's chosen leaders, Moses and Aaron. His disdain for authority led him down a destructive path, and his fate serves as a warning for all who dare to challenge God's appointed authority. Lastly, we learn about the consequences of rebellion. Korah's rebellion didn't just affect him, but it had a ripple effect, impacting the entire Israelite community. When we rebel against God's authority, we not only harm ourselves, but also those around us. This tale from the book of Numbers, chapter 16, is not just a historical account, but a lesson-filled narrative that continues to resonate today. It's a stark reminder of the importance of obedience, respect for authority, and the far-reaching effects of rebellion. This tale serves as a stark reminder that God's authority is not to be challenged lightly. And so, we conclude the chilling tale of Korah's rebellion, a stark reminder of the consequences of challenging divinely appointed leadership and the importance of humility and obedience. This timeless tale serves as a mirror to our modern lives, urging us to reflect on our actions and attitudes. If this story stirred your thoughts and made you ponder, please give us a thumbs up. Join our growing family and subscribe to our channel by clicking the tree below this video, then hit subscribe. Thank you for watching.